Hello world, what is going on everyone this morning? How is it going? It's going pretty good on this end. Whoops. I'm going to do chat here. Hope everyone has had a good past few days. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Other than that, uh, yeah, we'll talk about a little bit of everything today, uh, as usual. I don't know if I, I got some of my orders pulled. Probably pack. Oh, I don't know what that was. Oh, that's what that was. My iMac has this notification thing that popped up Valentine's Day tomorrow, which is true. Um, so yeah, I may I got some orders pulled. I may pack up some stuff if the uh yeah, we'll see. Yesterday was a productive day. Got some stuff listed. Uh most of the stuff from my haul video on uh that dropped on Tuesday. Most of that stuff is listed now. Uh good morning to Destiny, the Shamrock Pixie, L the 24 picker, Karen Henderson, Mike the Maniac Picker, good morning. Steampunk Town, Mo Flips, good morning. Nathan, Diane. Hope everyone is doing well. So, first and foremost, um, something odd. I mean, everyone likes to gripe about sales, eBay sales and stuff, and uh, that's legitimate, you know, uh, especially recently. Uh, good morning, Danny, uh, Piper John, Jen, Hobby Thrifts, good morning. Thank you for popping in. Michelle Lathan, good morning. Um, but something unusual i don't you know i'm just like anyone i'll grab about sales when they don't happen because crap that's what we do this for we want to sell stuff you know um i'm peeling a sticker off <laughs> but um something unusual the past like two days has been going on because you know anyone that watches me regularly knows i have three ebay accounts but two of those are my main ones basically i have in one of them in particular one ebay account i usually have between 900 and a thousand usually close to a thousand but i'm building back up towards that from the christmas holiday i think i'm up to like 9 30 or 9 40 or something but um that's my main ebay account you know and that account typically i mean just just an average typically sells on average, 200 250 a day. Good days are 400 bucks. Bad days, 100 150 My second eBay account, I may go three or four days without selling anything. And then what, some, day I'll, some days I'll sell two or three. Some days I won't sell any at all. Um, but last up until last night, about 7 o'clock, the previous 36 hours... From so from Tuesday evening at seven o'clock, previous 36 hours to that, my main account, the one that has you know almost a thousand between 900 and a thousand, didn't sell anything, zero. And that is extremely, extremely weird. You know, there may be a day goes by, I don't sell anything like five times a year, but uh, that main eBay account for 36 solid hours had nothing, zero. Um, that uh, part of me wanted to be, was tempted to call eBay and go, what the F is going on? Because it's, something's not right. Cause I firmly believe that something wasn't right. I was, you know, been listing stuff, been listing good stuff. And that account has really good stuff on it. Um, you know, I even started doing, uh, promoted listings on a bunch of stuff, even put a per some of the stuff, uh, on a sale, like a 20% off sale, nothing for 36 hours. But last night at seven o'clock, my wife and I were eating dinner. Actually, it's closer to six o'clock. So it's between six and seven o'clock. We were eating dinner and something sold finally. I'm like, oh, great. Maybe the, the drought is over. And between that six or 6.30 air time to eight o'clock, I sold five or six items for a couple hundred bucks. So bizarre. Nothing for 36 hours and then just completely random stuff. Five or six items for a couple hundred bucks. Just immediately it's like a a, a a switch flipped maybe literally i don't know what happened you know it's almost like my account was suspended but it wasn't or even if it was i didn't get any notifications you know and i don't know why it would be but uh it's just been uh been really bizarre i didn't put this in my haul video i just took the sticker off this thing but uh because i got this to sit on my desk i like a little chosky's i guess it's like a little desk magnifying 
it's like a paperweight, but it's a magnifier. It's pretty cool. Vintage. I only gave three and change for it. So. Most sometimes with the stuff in my haul videos, sometimes I'll show personal stuff, but most time I don't, you know, like that. So. Like my wife picks up clothes for herself all the time and we won't uh, put that stuff in the haul video. But anyway, that's my, it's it. Just something was weird. Like I said, it's like a, and I'm not being saying figuratively. I'm just like literally something switched on that account. But uh, yeah. But anyway, so uh, nitty gritty picker. Can we get a witness check on RVA flips? Kimmy may have got it. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I was sitting there waiting for his show to go live and nothing and no Facebook message or anything. So I don't know what happened. He must have just overslept. Craig, good morning. The land shark picker. Good morning. How you doing? Gina. Good morning. Uh, I got this by Dawn. Good morning. Jameson's Closet. Yeah, Mike the Maniac Picker said, I hear you no sales for almost a week. 125 listings, needless daily. Yeah, see, that's, un that's something strange there. It's like a portion of us, they've they turned it off. They turned that server off or something, you know, like they were unsearchable or something. Craig said eBay may have some issues. Not, And I'm, I'm not big on conspiracy theories or whatever but there's something going on and i don't really know but it's like last night at about 6 6 30 eastern something got turned back on like that server was down and they're like oh this thing's been down for a day and a half and we didn't realize it let's turn that back on uh, steampunk town who sells a lot of stuff says monday and tuesday was my slowest two days in the last year see something unusual so eBay, if you're out there, I'm too small for you to listen to me. If, if Pete to Craigslist Hunter would say something, they would respond to him or Scott or somebody. But eBay, if you're out there, what the heck is going on? Because something is, and you can't tell us there's not. <sighs> Let me see here. Mo, I'm trying a uh, first sale this weekend. Yeah. And like I said, I tried everything. I tried promoted listings, put stuff on sale, sent offers to people, everything that a responsible eBay seller should try listing, you know, list every day, uh, Everything a responsible eBay seller should do, I was doing, still no sales until 6, 6 30, about or 7 o'clock last night. Good morning, Hawk. Good morning, Dan, New Hampshire guy. Thank you for popping in. Uh, L, the 20, uh, L, the 24 picker says, I didn't have any sales the past two days. And last night, the switch turned on and got me three offer sales last night. See, same, probably about the same time mine did too, right? And that is something's weird. Something's going on. Cause like I said, I'm not one for conspiracy or anything, but something was, something was off, you know, um, nitty gritty picker says I'm over in Maryland and it's been slow for three days. Could be server. And, and I'm starting to believe that man. Cause you know, I'm in Northern Virginia. You're a neighbor right there in Maryland. Uh, literally I can almost see Maryland from across the water from where I live. So yeah, something went on, but hopefully it's over now and hopefully it doesn't happen again, which it's a long shot, but uh, yeah, we'll see. See, it's Steampunk Town's verifying it starting last night at 6 30 until this morning. They sold a little over 800 bucks. The proof is in the pudding. I tell that to people all the time when they, you know, say I'm overestimating stuff. And and I'm not, I don't think I'm overestimating this. Like something went on from, uh, see, what that Monday through Tuesday evening, something was not right. So, Maybe we should brigade eBay and go, what? I'll tell you what, let's uh, brigade eBay on Twitter and say, there's a group of us, you know, do it like a message. It's like a group of us got together and none of us made sales Monday through Tuesday evening. What's going on? Hashtag eBay or, you know, just somebody make us up some hashtags and we'll all post on Twitter, you know, eBay, uh, uh, Twitter, uh, eBay for business, you know, a uh, tag eBay and eBay for business. And let's, let's get some answers, you know, let's brigade them. I wish I had uh, Scott's following 50,000 followers because if we can get 50,000 people brigading eBay Twitters, they would have to say something, you know. But hopefully, you know, if, if three or four or 500 people see this and we're brigade Twitter, maybe they'll have to answer. And you know, let's do it. So, uh, everybody today and even tomorrow, uh, let's, I'm, I'm going to do it right now. Matter of fact, let's, uh, I'm going to pull up Twitter. I'm going to do this right now. Let me see here. Compose at eBay and at eBay for business Monday 
through Tuesday evening. Something happened that affected <laughs> spelling affected uh, hundreds of my eBay friends. Hundreds of us sellers. What happened? Or what is going on? Last night, about 6.30 Eastern, PM Eastern, like a switch was flipped and sales started happening again. My YouTube army verifies this. My YouTube army verifies the same thing. Okay, there we go. So I'll put at eBay, at eBay for business. Monday through Tuesday evening, something happened that affected hundreds of us sellers. What is going on? Last night about 6.30 p.m. Eastern, it's like a switch was flipped and sales started happening again. My YouTube army verified the same thing. How do you like that? So let's tweet that. You guys tweet them too. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm going to scroll back up and get to the messages here. So sorry. Good morning, Monty. How's it going this morning? Uh, Hawk says he has about 200 listings and sold 20 over the weekend, having a sale, making mobile friendly descriptions. Yep. That's something I've, I've looked into briefly was making things mobile friendly, but I need to do that again. We talked about that on, was that Monday or last Friday or something? The Ricardo, you know, that's the way most people are, the part-time sellers. Good morning, Will, on the Hangouts. Thank you for popping in. That's good to know, Ricardo. Shasha, good morning. The Georgia Picker. Candle Hoarder, good morning. Uh, Gina had the same experience. So, yep, coffee, coffee, that's going on. They seem to have an ongoing problem in communication with people. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt with that. Rose, complete week of no sales. Yeah, no doubt, Dan. <laughs> I mean, speaking of that, I got to start doing, I got to spend the whole day like getting all my tax together, tax stuff together for my CPA. I got to do that. I got to, that's something I dread doing, but it's absolutely necessary. Good morning, reseller Rockefeller, authorized picker. Good morning. And I have no doubt about that. Georgia picker, he says, I heard about 80% of sales were from mobile. No doubt about that at all. So in keeping with that theme, what do you do with adversity? What, what do you do? Like what, you know, the past two days, I basically made zero. So what if you needed money, you know, for bills and stuff? What, I mean, what do you do? And that's where being diversified, I think comes into play. You know, I have not been able to take the time out to get Amazon up and running, but maybe this is the impetus to force me to do that because you know, I have no doubt in my mind if I would have stuff at FBA, at least I would have had some sales, you know. I had a couple of low ball offers on Posh, but I can't rely on Posh for sales at all. Uh, it's proven that I can't rely on Etsy for sales, even though I have a few things listed there. My main thing is eBay. And when eBay is down or something's wrong, what do you do, you know? And I think this is what get, uh, gets a lot of people and uh, a lot of us resellers have talked about this, like a lot of folks you know, watch videos or see people having success, resellers having success and they get excited and they go to one thrift store, don't find anything and give up. You know, a lot of, a lot of, uh, this business is overcoming adversity, whether it's, you can't find anything to thrift or you're not making sales or something happened, a glitch at eBay has affected everything. 
And sometimes eBay has went down completely, you know, for usually just for an hour or so, but it's happened. I mean, you know, they've had a lot of glitches. So what do you do? And it's, it all comes down to overcoming adversity and, uh, being, uh, versatile being, having not all your eggs in one basket, you know? So I think this may give me the push to, uh, do Amazon quicker than I had, uh, thought I would. Good morning. Heather, uh, says she is a new seller and sells this weekend, but nothing Monday and started sales again last night. So she verified exactly the same thing. And this could be like, like we talked about with Craig, there could just be simply a certain sect of sellers that their stuff lives on a certain server. And that server was affected somehow and they didn't even realize it until last night, you know, and they probably would never admit that, but, uh, it's, it's very, very, very curious that this happened. The same time frame happened to a lot of us. Very, very curious indeed. Oh, there's Justin. Justin's alive, everyone. We can call off the uh, search party. We already had people heading out with like bloodhounds and, you know, who's going to get the internet sleuths on you. We were <laughs> uh, Diane says, I've been getting con consistent Amazon sales and eBay has been sporadic. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty typical. Uh, Amazon scary as mo. Yeah. And it, it, it's a different animal for sure. Um, especially with the return rates, it, it can be a different animal. Uh, Gina says, yes, makes me really think about Amazon. I do cross posh, cross post to Mercari and posh, but it's not enough. You're absolutely right. It is not enough. You know, especially for us full-time sellers, like basically I had no income for the past 36 hours, you know, and that, that's not good. It affected my, uh, my, uh, weekly and monthly sales greatly. Piper John says, actually my FBA sales have been slow too. Of course, I only sell books on Amazon. So yeah, that could be anything, right? Pipe, right, John? Linda, the Caney Creek girl says, I'm working on that too, getting FBA going because my eBay sales are almost zero. Have to switch gears. Yep, it's all being about being diverse and versatile. Let's see here. Uh, Jameson closet, Jameson's closet asked curious if everyone from the East coast had the no or slow sales, uh, they're in Michigan. I mean, I'm on the East coast and we had one from Maryland. Uh, Justin, how have your eBay sales been? He's in Virginia as well. We have Michelle Lathan that's in Virginia. Uh, Dan, New Hampshire guys in East coast. So yeah. See if it's regional or not. We'll get this narrowed down, you know, <laughs> I still say we Twitter brigade Twitter or eBay on Twitter. I've already sent my message. So yeah, get them. We want answers. Let me see here. Monty's in, yeah, Monty's in Texas. Authorized pickers in Michigan as well. Satan Gina's in North Carolina had the same issue. Heather's in the East Coast, the same issue. Massachusetts. Uh, let me see here. Reseller Rockefeller said eBay's algorithm is a very tricky thing to master. You need to constantly be active. And that means things like relisting items, changing titles, and prices, so on. Yeah. And I've talked about that before. It's not only listing, it's, you know, changing stuff, altering stuff. And I try to do that on a daily basis. The Georgia picker, I've been getting a lot of sales from New Jersey, Florida, New York, and using Georgia. Yep. See, Justin's been meh, but... Yeah, I had literally zero for 36 hours, a period, which is very, very, very unusual. Like it's never happened to me unusual. <laughs> There's part-time pickers in California and it's been slow. Hawk is in Fargo. I've, I've been to Fargo, Hawk, and, and it's a fine city, but the winter there, when we were there in winter, no, thank you, brother. No, thank you. <laughs> Yep, yep. Um, our, uh, Justin says, I think the shipping chain screwed up their algorithm, and I have no doubt about that. You know, you have all these different coders, and yeah, all it takes is one little tweak, and it just sucks the life out of everything. So Michelle had one cell. Good morning, Glenn, Swamp Picker. Good morning, good morning, bud. Hope you're doing well. Hope your mom is doing well. <laughs> yeah, it seems that way, Linda, right? Yeah. Uh, and 
if you don't have a lot of listings, you know, my sister's dealing with this, you know, she has, you know, just the 50 listings and stuff. And, um, she's busy cause she works full-time job, but you know, she will sell, you know, one or two things maybe a week, you know, and she's like, this is not good, but you know, it's all about getting your numbers up, you know, and I try to encourage her, of course. Good morning, Denise. How's it going in Minnesota? Uh, Nate, uh, I had zero for the week. I've never had that. Maybe I had no sales here. Yeah. Maybe a day or two and no sales, but yeah, I had zero for a whole week. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Nitty gritty picker. Uh, do you, I, I just use global shipping program. Uh, so, and I still have, you know, like people from Australia message me. It's too expensive. I'm like, I'm sorry. You know, I'm covered if I use global shipping program and I'm sorry you have to pay for that, but you know, I just don't want to get screwed over. Oh yeah, Mo. I don't think it's on purpose, Mo. I think like Justin said, maybe they, somebody tweaked their algorithm and somebody messed something up, you know, uh, with that massive of a platform, all it takes is a little tweak and it'll mess the whole platform up. You know, if, if it's not uh, consistent. Good morning, Tracy. Thank you for popping in. Oh, that's, that's a good visual, Justin. Thank <laughs> uh, Mike, the moronic pest says, on days I have no sales, I just look at it as a vacation day since I need to go to the post office, freeze up my data list more. Yeah. And that's what I have been doing too. You know, like, well, I had the dentist thing, of course, on Monday. But uh, yeah, yesterday I just listed, you know, and like I said, my wife and I, I had to go pick up my wife uh, at another train station. There was an issue with whatever. She had work and stuff, so had to go to a town a little bit north of us. So we went and ate dinner at an Italian place. And as soon as I walked into the door at that Italian place, I got a sale. And then over the next two hours, it was like cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Not to say I'm complaining. I loved it, you know, but I was like, finally, this 36 hour drought is over. I think I was going into de a depression, a cha-ching withdrawals, you know? Um, oh, that's awesome. AP authorized pickers uploading his newest video you guys go check that out uh don says i have had about a sale a day for the past three days not my usual for sure yeah lots of snow in minnesota i don't know if that's good or bad denise <laughs> i know it's better than the ice you guys had dealt with last week uh hawk says great picking here but i hear there is an opening in virginia planning on moving there this summer awesome that's awesome when my wife took this job in dc you know we live in northern virginia suburbs she had did a detail at in fargo like a little just a like a month or two thing and they wanted her there in fargo they offered her a job a good job and stuff but i just didn't want to live in fargo so like i said fine town but those winters no, thank you. <laughs> and Nate said the government shutdown really hurt business. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. I know it hurt a lot of people in my area, even in my neighborhood. So, absolutely reseller Rockefeller, 100%. Good morning, Candace. Thank you for popping in. Yeah, I hope so, Nate. The people start filing their uh, taxes and getting, I hope they get refunds, you know. Good morning, chicken fried steak. Thank you for popping in. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Don. That's, I like that, the interaction confirmation button. Good morning, Joe. Hope it's, hope you're doing well in Conway, Arkansas. Okay, so how have we been doing on YouTube? Let's find out. Go to my YouTube studio app. We have, well, let me see here. Go. Uh, su subscribers are definitely slow, um, just like everything. But let me show you. This is in the regular app. I show you get the most up to date subscriber information in the regular app. It's kind of lags in the YouTube Studio app. So uh, let me see here. 
1,469 subscribers. I went to 1,000, I hit the 70 mark, 1,470 for about an hour yesterday and then I lost a subscriber. Typical. Okay, so over to YouTube Studio. Last 48 hours, exactly 1,000 views. Uh, top video the past 48 hours is episode 79, our thrift store haul with 403 views. Number two was just a live show. Uh, watch minutes the past 28 days, 185,187. With 13,553 views the past 28 days. Average view duration still in the 13s, 13 minutes and 39 seconds. Revenue the past 28 days is $82.64. That's what everyone wants to see. That just went down just because some of the initial super chats and stuff are dropping off from when I was first monetized. And that has hold, held firm, 75% uh, ad revenue, 25% super chats. Appreciate all the super chats. 166 new new subscribers the past 28 days with 63.8% of views and watch minutes from subscribers. And 31% of watch time from people not subscribed. 97% likes versus dislikes in the top video the past 28 days is episode 76. 25 items that sold on eBay with 10,843 watch minutes. And number two is a what sold video as well. Actually, four out of the top five are what sold videos. Episode 76, 72, 78, and 74. All right, so back to the chat. Okay. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate that. Nitty Gritty Picker says the uh, set on the news that tax returns are a lot less. And, yeah, and that's going to happen. It's going to be worse this year, and it's going to be even worse next year. The the uh, and this is not political. This is facts. Thank you, Denise. Appreciate that. This is 100% facts. It is not political. The tax thing that was passed under the current administration was a bait and switch for normal people like us because it gave you good relief that first year. This is the second year of it. It's going down. The third year, it's going to go down even more. So uh, people that three years ago that got refunds like next year will owe money. It's just a fact. You know, I looked into it when it was passed. I'm like, this is not good. So I have, I've, I've start planning on it and I actually have a fund set aside with some money in it to pay in because whereas like last year, I got a small refund and year before that was a bigger refund because the way you do your business with depreciation, home office deductions and stuff, all that's changed. They've changed home office deductions. They've changed what you can deduct, uh, depreciation, all that's changed. And, uh, yeah. We're going to be paying more normal people, you and me, you know, that's just the, the current environment. No, that's no politics. That's just the facts. Uh, Nate said, anyone ever had issues on your eBay label somehow not scanning? I had this happen yesterday and they wouldn't accept them. Huh? I've haven't had that issue, but thank you, Denise. I really, really appreciate that. Every little bit helps to go towards that tax bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh that is true hawk i forgot about that yeah sometimes certain tapes if you put tape over the barcode that'll uh affect that you're right i forgot about that and mo says confirmed 400 bucks less here than last year yep and it'll be worse next year i promise i 100 percent guarantee it Uh, Nate said my coworkers was more, they said not a huge amount more. Huh? I mean, everybody's different, you know, and stuff like that. But in general, uh, I know mine for a fact, I've done my estimated, you know, I can kind of, I've done, you know, business taxes for the past 13 years. I had my CPA do it, but in general, 
I get everything in line and I can kind of tell what's going to happen. And, uh, um, this year I'm may get a small refund, but, uh, next year I'm going to owe for sure. 100%. Isn't that funny? Jameson Closet said just the opposite. One guy, their postmaster said not to, and Jameson said their post office told them to put tape over the barcode. Crazy, right? I, I mean, I've seen somewhere, I can't remember where it was, if it was another YouTube video or uh, another reseller that said, and maybe it was the type of tape they were using but the, or the type of label, but uh, some tapes you put over there won't allow their scanners to scan it, but who knows? Uh, having the Dymo, I don't, tape over mine and if i have to like the box is a weird shape and you have to fold over the label just don't tape over the barcode that's what i do i'll just tape like the top and the bottom or something uh, <laughs> yeah yeah always get contradictions don't we hawk yeah it's just like everything you know That is weird, Nate. Uh, yeah, it's very, very odd. I wish I had a solution for that, bud. Uh, could be time for a new printer. Get you a Dymo or a Rolo or something. I don't know. Okay, so yeah, I haven't heard the cha-ching this morning. Uh, it's all, I always hope to when I'm live. You know, that's always a good thing when it happens live is the, the nice cha Cha-ching sound. Well, I guess it kind of did happen. Denise he kicked me a super chat, so that is a, a type of a cha-ching, isn't it? I appreciate that. Um, yeah. So, um, I'm going to pack up a few things, I guess. We're about 30 minutes in. You guys keep on chatting. If you have any questions, I will be back and roll roll back up on the, the, the area. I already got one boxed up here. Reweigh it real quick. And this one in this box is, is 11 pounds, believe it or not. 11 pounds. So, all right. I had this one kind of queued up. <laughs> so this one's quick. Okay, that's one. This one went cubic. It was 11 pounds in a 10 by 8 by 6 box. And if this was just regular priority mail, it would have been in the teens, like 13, 14, 15 bucks. But it was cubic and it was only $8 and change. Because, so I used Pirate Ship for that one. That's where the, you know, if you have small and heavy regional rate boxes and cubic especially really, really helps out with that. So let me see here. I've got my stuff over here. This is a good one. I'm not going to show you. This sold like a, this item here is small and it sold global shipping program. And if this was just domestic, I'd put this in a padded flat rate and ship it. But since it's going international, I'm going to box it because, yeah, because it'll get damaged. <laughs> okay, so finding the right box because this will be first class. And uh, yeah, let me measure it up real quick. We can get down to about six by five. Uh, under an inch six by five by under an inch those are always tough ones box wise for me i don't really keep a lot of those boxes on hand especially first class yeah i may have to franken box a little bit I am going to go ahead and put it in a padded flat rate and the regular box. Like I said, they're tough on shipments anyway. And then when they go global and international, it's even tougher on stuff. So. 
I don't know if it'll fit in here. Let's find out. I don't think it will. Yeah, maybe if I angle it, we'll see here. I'm not going to tape this box. I'm just going to put the flaps down just to see, kind of see where I'm at here. Yeah, that'll work. I can angle it in there. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. These boxes, this is an eight by six by four eBay. Whoops. Almost did priority. I don't want priority tape. I want regular tape because it's going first class. Eight by six by four box. Doesn't weigh a whole lot. It's a few ounces. So this will definitely stay in first class because this is just going to Kentucky, you know, for the global shipping program. I have an idea for a, a new video series I'm thinking about doing, but I have to get the right equipment and everything. This is eight ounces. Remind me to talk about that a little bit more. I'll get this label printed. Eight ounces. Perfect. That's what I had in there. Eight ounces. Got that one on the dot. So first class mill to Kentucky, $3.22. Beautiful. Oh, there's Mr. Hobbs. You hear him? Oh, there he is. He's came down to help. Did you come to help? Come help, Mr. Hobbs. Anyway, I have a, I don't know. I have an idea for a new series and I don't, you know, I, I think I'm going to try it out just at least once or twice and see if anyone likes it. And, uh, if they do, then uh, I'll continue it, but uh, I'll do a test one maybe in a week or two. But there's some setup involved to do this new series. Where did my chat window go? Oh, here comes Mr. Hobbs. Oh, stop it. Okay, there it is. So... And that's a couple. Mr. Hobbs wants to make a guest appearance, so we'll come back over here. Come on, Hobbs. Uh, Nate, I have a Dymo 4XL. Hops. He's looking at me like, I don't want to do that. Can I make a guest appearance? Okay. What you doing, buddy? Oh, my gosh. One thing I can't really get used to with this Mac is how the windows work. The... Okay, so let me see here. Uh, Denise says no cha-chings for me today yet either. Yep, none yet. Hopefully it'll happen for all of us. Morning, Justin. Thank you for popping in before you head to the nine to five. I appreciate that. That's a neat, uh, the, the Dymo 4XL. Uh, I've had it for a couple of years and it's outstanding. I've heard good things about the Rolo printer as well. So I do have the the link in the my Amazon affiliate links. If you're looking to get one, I appreciate it if you buy one through that. It kicks me a few pennies if you do that. Good morning, Alabama Thrifter. Thank you for popping in. Jameson's Closet Ask anyone in chat, use GoDaddy Bookkeeping. I do. I use GoDaddy Bookkeeping 100%. And I think it's a... Uh, it's spectacular once you have it set up. Good morning, Maria Nunez. Thank you for popping in. Good morning, pick and roll. Hobbs is the boss. This is his house, and we just live in it, don't we, bud? I think I'm going to have to take Mr. Hobbs to the vet for his bald spot on this side. I think he, 
I, we still can't figure it out if it's allergies or what, but I'm going to take him to the vet again this week sometime. And, uh, it could be a thyroid, you know, he may just need some thyroid medication. So we'll see expensive blood test and find out, but that's why we work. Don't we Hobbs? Uh, Nate says, can you run your Dymo with just wireless things? It's, uh, not that I know of Nate, you have to have it hooked up. It's that's the bad thing about all these thermal printers is I don't think any of them are wireless capable. And it'd be awesome if they would, if they were like the Rolo, you know, I can't actually speak for the Rolo, but I don't think they're wireless, but I know the Dymo isn't because yeah, that'd be awesome if I just had my iPad and I could ship stuff and just send the label to, you know, the printer, just like I can with my, uh, my ink jets up here behind my monitor and I can be upstairs and print something down here to it. You know, that's no big deal. But, uh, with these, no. Yep. Steven, I've, I've had pets my whole life, dogs and cats. I'm not, I'm a, you know, there's cat people, there's dog people. I'm an animal person. I just like animals. Uh, my dogs are over there snoring right now on their nice wool blanket. And, uh, I have two other cats, but they usually don't come and help me out. Like Mr. Hobbs does. He's the, he's the helper kitty. Uh, Heather, just do godaddy.com because there's no like kickbacks or anything for that. No affiliate links or anything. Just, uh, yeah. Or Google search, just godaddy, uh, bookkeeping. It'll take you right to it. Awesome. Glenn always like that first one of the day. It's almost like your coffee, isn't it? I need my cha-ching right in the morning. If I don't get it, I, I feel grumpy. <laughs> uh, Monty, not that I'm aware of. You cannot use, it has to be hardwired into a computer. Unfortunately, I wish you could, but, uh, and maybe that's the next generation. I don't know. Because that would be very, very convenient Convenient if you could print labels off your phone or your uh, iPad. But not that I'm aware. And maybe if you set up a print server. But uh, that's beyond me. <laughs> I, I have some technical ability, but uh, not in-depth. Oh, you're welcome, Nate. Absolutely, Mo. Yeah, but some wireless or Bluetooth printer. Yeah, that'd be really nice. And, you know, obviously a big printer, you can do that. But uh, these small ones, I, I just don't know of a way yet. There could be. I'm not saying there's not, but uh, none that I know of. Like Craig said, there may be a way to do it through a, you know, like I said, I was talking about a print server, do a virtual network and do a print server on that. And you may be able to link it up through your router, but that's beyond my ability. Oh, well, that's awesome, Don. If there is, let's link it. You know, we'll uh, look at it. I, I know when I got mine two years ago, they didn't have one, but, you know, two years is a long time in the tech world. They definitely could have put one out by now for sure. Okay, so yes, it is Nate. Like I said, with this uh, the Dymo Four XL about one hundred and fifty bucks, I think, and the Rolo is probably the same. But uh, yeah, if you're using an inkjet, though, this thermal will pay for itself, depending on how much you print, of course. But it'll pay for itself sooner rather than later, you know compared to buying ink for an inkjet printer or toner for a laser for that matter, you know, a, a toner lasts a lot longer. I used to have, you know, my businesses, we had several laser printers and, uh, used to go through a couple of toner cartridges a month and that's yeah, expensive. I've, you know, eventually made a deal with one of our, the local places to just, uh, trade in our old ones and they give us ones that they had refilled. And that was a lot cheaper to, 
And Denise has a zebra. That's awesome. Tommy Bernard, welcome, brother. That's what I was thinking. See, Tommy's more tech inclined. That's what I was thinking. You could like go through your router somehow if you set it up. Uh, the, but I didn't know there there is a, for sure a wireless version of the Dymo 4XL. Oh, it's a zebra. It's not a Dymo. That's what it is. So good. Is that is that zebra right there? Is it a four by six label printer? Of course, that's pricey. Three hundred bucks. I think I'll stick with my wired version for now. <laughs> Especially if not making any sales for 36 hours. This goes to show, just like I tell everyone, you know, don't know everything and things are constantly changing, whether it's eBay rules and eBay server downs or it's technology. Everything's always a changing. That's the one inevitable truth in the world. There you go. Denise got a good deal on eBay for her zebra. 130 bucks. Let him more than half off. That's awesome. Okay, so let's package up a couple more things. Let's see what we got next here. We'll do that one. Okay. You guys, keep on chatting. Mr. Hobbs will help me out here. He's holding down the fort. Ooh, oh, a couple of breakable things. I have to package up pretty carefully. Already got my bubble wrap pre-cut because I knew I was going to need it. This is one of those items that I had for a pretty long time, but I knew it would sell eventually. It just is a very, very specialty item. It takes a certain collector to see it and want it. But sell it did. Had it for a while. It was small. Several pieces. Didn't give hardly anything for it, so... two more small ones be interesting I can't remember if this is I think this is first class gotta cut this piece in half anybody ever sharpen their scissors this pair is pretty sharp but I got a pair that's dull I'm going to just sharpen them up. These are just cheap scissors. You know, I think I got them off Amazon for like 10 bucks for three pair of them about five years ago. I mean, they're still named brand. They're Scotch brand, but just cheap scissors. Okay, get a small box, uh, well, eight by six by four, another eight by six by four. Probably do a, you know, I've wrapped each individual piece of those in bubble wrap and I will do a paper in this box as well. My, uh, my jaw feels pretty good. Uh, feels like I've just been lightly punched in the jaw. You know, still a little bit sore, but not too bad. These implants are 
serious business. Okay. Small ones in the round. I have to reconfigure here. These breakable things, especially when there's lots of pieces, you know, I individually wrapped all of them. But then you got to get them in there snug so they're not jostling around. In the box. Bubble wrap and paper. There we go. Yeah, that is nice and snug. Shake it. No movement. That's the key. This feels like it's borderline a pound. Oh, and it is. It's a pound exactly. Exactly. Oh, that's okay. They paid for priority mail anyway. So that worked out okay. So six seventy five shipping. This is going to Delaware. One's just a state over from a couple of states over from us, but not too far from us. The Tommy Bernard's in Delaware, I think. All right. Another one bites the dust. be interesting where this next one is going whether it's going close or far because this one could be a cubic item but we'll have to see where it's going a big piece of bubble wrap this item i took a best offer on that maybe normally would have countered but this is one of the first things that sold after that drought and i just wanted to kickstart a sale you know, I needed sales, but, uh, you know, if I would have countered, it would only been like five bucks anyway. So the way I look at it, I paid $5 to kickstart the, uh, sales velocity. They may have declined it anyway, but it sold, still made money, still made a profit. That's what it's about. Another piece of bubble wrap for that side. Be right back. I just recheck every once in a while, but I have my bubble wrap that I use linked in my Amazon affiliate links and few people have actually bought it. It's the best deal I could find and it's through Amazon, of course, but, um, but still research because you know, the price has changed so fast on this kind of stuff. And it's decent quality. Okay, that's one piece. This thing has two pieces. I right, got this piece wrapped in paper, but I'm going to wrap it in bubble wrap as well.
Okay. The question is box size. That is the question. Because this is about 10 inches. About 10 by 10. Huh? 10 by 9. 10 by 10. I may have to do a 12 by 12 by 12 box on this. And that wouldn't be a priority mailbox. Priority mailboxes don't make 12 by 12 by 12. But I have an eBay shipping box that's 12 by 12 by 12. Over on this side. I don't use it that often, so it's kind of at the bottom of my pile here. But there we go. As I knock stuff over. 12 by 12 by 12 eBay box. Like I said, I only use these too terribly often. But, you know, when you need them, you need them. And this definitely will be priority mail. So let's see here. Where is this one going? I like to make predictions. This is going to New Hampshire. So this is probably just regular priority mail. I'm pretty close up to Dan's neck of the woods. Oh, stupid tape. Don't you hate it when your tape folds over on you? Okay, now I'll definitely be lining this with paper. check the weather but it looks like it's pretty nice out there today but I think I caught a glimpse that more winter weather is on the way for us of course okay a lot of people on this one the thing about breakables is that they bring some money they may take a while to sell but you have to pack them up really really well it takes more time these properly that's why I tend to uh, estimate high on the shipping weights on these because the amount of packing materials involved to ship them properly pieces on top there and be good to go. Okay. Give her a shake test. Pretty good. Ready to go. You know, some days I can ramble and I have stuff just bouncing around my head, and right now my head is just empty. I don't know why. It's just empty. I do need to get stuff inventoried. I've been listing a lot, but haven't been properly inventorying it. That's why it's kind of a mess over here on my shipping station. A lot of stuff that's listed sitting over here in my way. Ooh. 
Okay. Five pounds, ten ounces. Five pounds, ten ounces. Yeah, eight dollars and nine cents. About what I thought. Definitely. Well, let me. I'm just going to check this on Pirate Ship just for giggles. Because I don't think it would be eligible for anything. I think it's too big for cubic, but let's check. Because why not? Five pounds, ten ounces. So on pirate ship... Nine dollars and twenty-two cents on eBay. Eight dollars and ninety-five cents. So it is twenty-seven cents cheaper on eBay. That's what I thought, but you know, doesn't hurt to check. A pirate ship had a good two or three months there where they were getting most of my business, and now that has shifted back towards eBay, processing my. Shipping labels. Right. Let's see what you guys are up to. I got two more to ship, but not a big deal. Cool. Gotta turn that heater off. I got a heater underneath my desk here. It's actually getting warm down here. Usually I'm cold. Okay, let me see. I'm gonna scroll back up a little bit just to see what you got got guys got going on. Okay. Now you guys are talking about shipping a little bit, and yeah. Uh, some specific questions. And Justin preempted me again. He just went live. This is why this takes me to another thing I was thinking about the other day. Is that no matter what... You still got to look out for yourself. I mean, you may like someone, it may be a family, it may be anything, but you got to be you. If you have in your mind, you want to do something, you go, well, I shouldn't do this because so-and-so may get mad. Well, you got to look out for you, right? You know, you got to do what you need to do. Like, you know, what fits into your life and your timelines and what other people are doing may not fit into that. So you got to look out for you, you know? Uh, let me see here. Yes, Serena says, you know, talking about priority boxes, they are free and you can order them straight off the USPS website. Awesome Alabama thrifter made a sale. That's awesome. Love that. You can see my shelf back there is full of them. And that's what I use. I mean, I'd probably say 80% of the time I end up using, you know, priority mailboxes. And so that's a free thing. And post offices will carry some, but they carry limited amounts, like um, some of the smaller stuff. Uh, but I really, the ones I use the most of the uh, priority mailboxes are this seven by seven by six box. It is box number four. I use that one a ton. I use the 12 by 12 by eight box a ton. And this is box seven oh box seven that's the biggest priority mailbox they make and uh i use that one a lot i just got some more in the mail the other day because this is my last one over here and i ordered some more and they came in so gotta get those down here and put up 
and I use a lot of the shoe box size priority mail boxes, which is, it's just called the shoe box, priority mail shoe box. And that's 15 outside diameter, 15 by eight by six, essentially. Yeah, I use that one a lot. It's not just for shoes. You can use anything in that. It's called a shoe box, but you can use it for anything. And yeah, that's the ones I use the most of, you know, and I have all the other ones up here, but those three I use the most. Let me see here. Good morning, Sue Ann. Your deal is going out this morning, Sue Ann. Let me see here. Yeah, Nate, exactly. And I figured that last one wouldn't be eligible for cubic ship, but it doesn't hurt to check, you know, because you get that big of a box, it's usually not. See you there, Glenn. So anyway, yeah, uh, 62 watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Uh, hit that thumbs up if you will. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up here in the next few minutes or so. So if you have any last minute questions or comments, uh, I want to say a special thank you to Denise for the super chat. That always helps and we appreciate it immensely. And so does my puppies and kitties and pay for their kibble. Uh, yeah talked about my jaw a little bit it's still just a, a you know i haven't been in a fight in decades literally a couple a couple of decades probably since i've been out of the marines if that tells you anything i haven't been in a fist fight uh and the, but my wife asked have you ever been punched in the face i'm like yeah i've been punched in the face because <laughs> i told her i was like this feels like somebody punched me in the face and that's what it feels like it feels like somebody punched me in the jaw right there and i kind of have naturally puffy cheeks anyway but uh, this is a little bit puffier than normal, you know, a little bit swollen, swollen, but it wasn't too bad overall for somebody cutting into your gums and drilling down into your jawbone and putting an anchor in there. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah, John, absolutely. Uh, Chris Rose asked, I think it's been brought up before. Do you have any recommendations on any wholesalers? to use for ungating i haven't used any crystal i think justin has used one or two but um uh, yeah i would definitely ask um uh, or watch some of scott the beard pickers video uh steve alcorn has a few as well but yeah as far uh, as far as ungating yeah uh, sorry i just now i'll never claim to know something i don't and i've never uh, done the wholesaling for ungating. So sorry about that. I hope that doesn't affect your uh, viewership of me, mostly eBay. All right. Thanks, Alabama Thrifter. All right. Thanks to everyone for popping in and for uh, watching and listening. Uh, I do have my Amazon affiliate links. If anybody needs anything, of course, you know, poly bags or bubble wrap or anything, hit those if you can, if you like. Even Dymo printers, big stuff, uh, printers and labels and all kinds of stuff. But uh, thanks for everyone for uh, popping in. Yeah, I believe that too, Denise. <laughs> but uh, thank you, Denise. Thank you, everyone, for participating. Um, yeah, we will. I am filming a What Sold video this afternoon, videoing of What Sold video this afternoon. That'll be live tonight or tomorrow for patrons and, uh, of course, uh, Thursday for uh, YouTube. But thanks, guys. And we will see you guys on Friday live later.